Ever since I got into development fundraising, I've been a big fan of large dinners or vision events. Those are a proven success, but I'm often asked about the value of small dinner parties. Do they work? And my answer is always the same. It depends. When done correctly, they're an effective income strategy. If done incorrectly, they seem to be a waste of time and a huge hassle. Today, I'm going to show you how to do a small dinner party correctly so that you can get fully funded this year. Hi, I'm Jim Dempsey, and this channel is designed to help leaders of nonprofits become fully funded each year. I've learned a lot of secrets over 38 years of development and fundraising, and it's my goal through these videos to share those secrets with you to see your income soar. In order to conduct a successful small dinner party, you need to do the following four steps. Step number one, pre-planning. Before starting, you need to set some SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. First, attendance. I found it best if you can get seven to 20 giving units to attend the dinner. To qualify as a small event, you're not going to want more than 20 giving units in attendance. Second, location. You'll want to have this in a hotel, club, or restaurant. Some have asked about using a home, but most are not large enough for this many guests. But even more important, sometimes a home is too intimate for people to consider making a sizable gift. A private venue makes it more professional and people take the giving opportunity more seriously. Make sure that you have a dinner and not a dessert. Desserts have become popular, but definitely don't raise as much money as dinner parties. By providing a dinner, it makes for an upscale event and people feel more comfortable to give a large gift. And dinners work much better than lunches because both the husband and wife can attend, leading, large, leading to larger gifts and to more aligned giving. Third, financial. Always set your total goal based on the total amount needed to fund a project or the endeavor. Doing this means that everyone in attendance must play a role in accomplishing the goal. Some in attendance may do the math and see how much they need to give by dividing the number in attendance by the goal. So be prepared for that to be a challenging amount for everyone. Not too easy, but not, new, not too difficult to give. Don't make the mistake of asking everyone to give the same amount. If everyone in this room would give $5,000, we would accomplish our goal. That's often referred to as the myth of the multiples. For some donors, this overchallenges them, but for more often than not, it underchallenges most. Let them do the math, but perhaps they will give more, even much more. Step number two, planning and marketing. The venue. Choose a venue with a moderately priced dinners. Don't go to the most expensive place in town, but also don't skimp. Go to a venue that upper middle or upper income donors would go to eat. That's not a time to cut corners. Choose a central location that's easy for attendees to find. Give a, get a private room away from the noise of a restaurant or hotel. Ensure the venue can serve your group in 45 minutes or less. Consider having sour and dessert preset if necessary. And no buffets. No upper income person wants to dress up and go through a buffet line. Ensure the room is not so large that it swallows you or small that you feel too crowded. Attendees should sit in a U shape with the organizational leader at the bottom of the U. Some hotels have large boardrooms with a large table that seats 15 to 20 if your group is that small. Invitation, phone call or meeting. Have three to five board members or current donors invite their friends or colleagues. Ask them to invite nine to 15 close friends Remember, you must ask three couples or singles to get one to attend. Create a script. Make sure you give them something that they feel confident in when reading through. When inviting, share the following. The problem that the organization was created to solve, the solution, which are the programs or strategies of the organization, the results if the program is funded, the amount for the project and how they can help. This should all be done in a summary. Ask to attend. Be sure to remind your inviters every two weeks leading up to the event and at least a week the last 14 days leading up to the event. 
Step number three, implementation of the event. Your date and time are very important. Fridays and Saturdays are the best days to ensure that both a husband and wife can attend. And as I said earlier, this will lead to larger gifts and more aligned giving. Your time of day. For Friday night, 7 p.m. start is best. For Saturday, 6 p.m. is best. The program. Right after registering, have about 20 minutes of socializing and hors d'oeuvres. Give 40 to 45 minutes for dinner. Then have a two minute welcome, introduction, and appreciation for coming. Have a two to three minute video and then restate the problem, present the solution and your project in 10 to 15 minutes by your organizational leader. Have three testimonies, two change life stories, and one giving testimony. In five to 10 minutes, tie it all together and present the appeal for funding. The ask, briefly review the problem or need, the solution, that's the output, and the evidence of changed lives, that's the outcome. Explain that the involvement of each of them is needed to make the solution a reality. Indicate that it is not necessary for them to make their decision tonight. Encourage them to pray and reflect on it if you're a faith-based organization. Let them know that the person who asked them to attend will call them in one to two days for their decision. Of course, if they want to give that night, give them the ability to do so. If the inviter is unable to call the guest, find an appropriate representative who will call. Tell them that they are being asked to consider a minimum of $1,200 or more. That can be done tonight or in the near future, starting with a single gift of $100 tonight and the remainder spread out over 12 months or anything in between. Let them know that they can give more, even much more, because the need is great. If you want to start them out at five or 10000 that works as well. Thank them for coming and dismiss them in, in with a closing prayer if you're faith-based. Step number four, post-event. The follow-up phase. Phone call follow-up. Inviters should call their friends one to two days after the dinner. Ask three key questions. Number one, what have you decided concerning giving for the project or the organization? Number two, do you know how you intend to give? monthly, single gift, quarterly, or somewhere in between. Do you know when you can make your gift? And the inviter passes along that information to the organization. Then the organization should check back to see if guests were contacted. See if a replacement needs to be found. Mail follow-up. A letter should be sent from the organization to every attendee thanking them for attending, or if they give a gift, a commitment, provide an envelope for their gift. Those making commitments should be given a way to give. Report back on a quarterly basis or at least at significant milestones and send a report to those making commitments on the progress being made by the project they funded. A small dinner can be an effective way to reach a good number of people in a short period of time and in an intimate and personal setting. Follow the instructions above and your small dinner will become a winner. The objective of this channel is to help your nonprofit get fully funded. If you found this video helpful, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you wish to watch future videos on this channel, hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified immediately of the next release. Also, post a comment below if there were things you especially liked or if there are topics you'd like to address and be sure to share this video with friends. If you have fundraising questions, submit them on Twitter at Jim W. Dempsey and use the hashtag Jim and Java or on Instagram also at Jim W. Dempsey and consider joining a ever growing group of life changers, our life changers Facebook group. If you want to learn what to do and how to do it on an appointment with a major donor, watch this video. And as always, I wish you the best as you get fully funded this year. Thank you. See you in the next video.